In this lecture, we will be covering the topic of equations in polar coordinates. Recall the definition of polar coordinates. We have a point P described in rectangular coordinates as XY, where X is the distance from the origin along the horizontal axis, and Y is the distance from the origin along the vertical axis. And we have this alternate way of representing this point P, and that is by connecting the origin and the point P with a line segment, which we call OP. And we call this point in polar R theta, where R is the magnitude of that line segment OP, or the distance of that point P from the origin. And theta is the angle made between this line segment OP and the positive X axis. And this gives us an alternative way to represent points in the XY plane. We used that drawing and the fact that we could make a right triangle out of that drawing where we had the leg of the triangle, this bottom leg being X, this leg being Y, the hypotenuse being R, this angle here was theta, and this angle is a right angle. And we were able to use our knowledge of trigonometry and the Pythagorean theorem to derive these four equations that allow us to convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates or from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. And we want to be able to do that with expressions, with equations and get an idea of what those equations are. First example, r equals 4. We should be able to have a sense of what that looks like. r equals 4, This we could imagine this as a graph being the set of all points with a distance 4 from the origin. Well, that sounds an awful lot like a circle of radius 4 centered at the origin. But how can we translate that into rectangular coordinates? Well, first we can note that if we square both sides, we have r squared equals 16, and recall from our equations that relate polar and rectangular coordinates that r squared is x squared plus y squared. And so we can make that change here and say x squared plus y squared equals 16, and we see this is the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius 4 as we're used to, right? We would think of that as x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared. A second example, theta equals pi over 4. Now this is an interesting example because r is not involved, it's just theta. So what does it mean to have the points in, in the xy plane such that theta equals pi over 4. Well, recall we had a polar coordinate x, uh, a polar coordinate representation of a point. It had theta being pi over 4 if when you connected the point to the origin with a line segment, this angle here was pi over 4. But the key thing to recognize is that for this expression to be satisfied, 
any point that has this theta pi over four works. It doesn't matter what R is. What that means is this entire 45 degree line is the line theta equals pi over four. So we see that theta equals a constant constitutes a line through the origin. We will use that quite a bit when we get into computations of areas of regions described by polar. To convert this in a way different than the geometry we just looked at here, we note that one of our relationships between polar and rectangular coordinates was that tan theta is y over x. So let's note that we can use that. Tangent of theta is y over x. And note if we take the tangent of both sides here, theta equals pi over 4. Tangent of both sides means tangent of theta is tangent of pi over 4. But recall, tangent of pi over 4 would be sine pi over 4 over cosine pi over 4. Each of those expressions is root 2 over 2, which means tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So by taking tangent of both sides of this expression here, we've obtained tangent of theta equals 1. But tangent of theta, if we want to convert to rectangular coordinates, is y over x. So that means y over x equals 1, or y equals x, which we know is the equation in rectangular coordinates of this 45 degree line through the origin. Another example, if we want to look at the line x equals 2, which of course is this vertical line intersecting the x-axis at 2, and we want to convert that to polar coordinates, we know that x is equal to r cosine of theta. And if we want, we can divide both sides by, co by cosine of theta to get r is 2 over cosine of theta, or r equals secant of theta. And you see here that this type of line is nicer in rectangular coordinates than it is in polar coordinates. This is kind of nice in both. And this previous example, circle centered at the origin, was nicer in polar than it is in rectangular coordinates. And this is one of the points of doing this, is that using different coordinate systems sometimes certain equations are nicer in, other, in some coordinate systems compared to others. Let's look at another, what we'll call an exploratory example. R equals 2 sine theta. And let's try to imagine what this is. And the way we might do this is to say, well, why don't we just start plugging in some points? Let's plug in some points and try out the different values for r. So suppose we make this chart and we say try different values for theta and then check what r will be. And we're going to choose values. Let's try and get an idea of what's going on in the first quadrant. So let's choose some natural values for theta 
for which we're comfortable working with sine of theta. So start out when theta is zero. In that case, r is two times sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero. How about if we do pi over six? r is going to be 2 times sine pi over 6. And then we have to remember how we evaluate these things. And we always want to know our triangles. So we have two right triangles that we should always keep in mind. One is the triangle where we have both legs being of length 1 and the hypotenuse root 2 and the angle is pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees for each of the non-right angles. And then the other triangle we want to know is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And the smaller angle is pi over 6, and the larger angle is pi over 3. And that with our Sokotoa rule we can evaluate sines and cosines, any of the trig functions at the kind of nice angles, pi over three, pi over six, pi over four. So here, sine of pi over six would be opposite over hypotenuse or one half. So we get one. And we're keeping track of points. So our pairs in polar, as a result here, are first we have 0, 0. Then we'll have pi over 6, 1. How about pi over 4? 2 times sine of pi over 4. Well, we know sine of pi over 4 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. Multiplying by 2, that gives us root 2. So that's the point pi over 4, root 2. And root 2 is, a, is close to 1.41. How about pi over 3? 2 times sine of pi over 3 Sine of pi over 3 is opposite root 3 over hypotenuse, which is 2. So we have 2 times root 3 over 2, or root 3. So we have the point pi over 3, root 3. And root 3 is about 1.73. And finally, let's do pi over 2. So 2 times sine pi over 2 we know that sine of pi over 2 is 1, and so we get 2. So we have this list of points represented in polar, and we're trying to get an idea of graphically what this might look like. So let's try and plot these points and see what we get. Let's plot these points that we've just constructed. And so our first point, theta is 0, r equals 0. If r equals 0, we are at the origin. So there's our first point. When theta equals pi over 6, and so recall what that means, Think of the line theta equals pi over 6. So that's the set of all points that when represented in polar can have a polar angle, may have a polar angle, have at least one representation of a polar angle of pi over 6. And so that will look something like this. And this point here 
would be one unit away from the origin. So let's give ourselves some units here and suppose this is two. And this is two. So here is one and one. So here this point is about one unit from the origin with along somewhere on this line. So we're one unit away from the origin So we're somewhere here. When theta equals pi over 4, so in that case, we're dividing this quadrant this way. That's our 45 degree line, which should look something like this. And our distance from the origin, our r is root two, which is about 1.41. So it's further away. And it's something like this. If we look at pi over three, We should get something like this. And we see that our point is a distance from the origin of root three or about 1.73, which is gonna be something like here. And finally, when theta is pi over two, pi over two, Theta equals pi over two is an equation of the y-axis and we see we are a distance two away. And so it's a bit hard to see what's happening. And this is actually one of the reasons why this is not really a technique that we use to graph in polar, just plotting points. And we, we're going to see a much, much more efficient ways to graph in polar, but we're plotting a bunch of points to try and understand what the relationship here is. And it turns out that if you plotted a bunch more points, what you would get is the circ is a circle a circle centered at the point 0 1 with radius 1 and again this set of five points wasn't really enough to to see that but if you had done, say, on a calculator or in a spreadsheet or any kind of software, many points, you would see the circle traced out. Now, the point of this is, of course, not really polar graphing. We're concentrating on trying to understand how to change equations from polar to rectangular or from rectangular to polar. But this is a nice exercise because We've toyed around with this and seen numerically at least a little bit of evidence that this thing is this circle. But we know what the equation of a circle like this is in rectangular. This is something that we've already, that we've learned in algebra. We know that a circle centered at the point hk is expressed as h minus x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared, or say r squared. Or why don't you make it even clearer? We'll just write it as radius 
squared. Well, in this case, we know the radius of this circle is one. We know the points, we know the H and the K for the center. H is zero, K is one. So we expect this to be X squared plus Y minus one squared equals one. How do we get that? Well, Note that on the right we have r, on the left we have r, on the right we have 2 sine theta, and it would be nice to have r sine theta. And if we multiply both sides by r, we get r squared is 2r sine theta. And that makes both sides nice in terms of converting to rectangular. We know that r squared can be written as x squared plus y squared, and r sine theta is y. So we can say this is x squared plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. And if we remember our procedure for completing the square, in this case, if we add 1 to both sides, things factor nicely, and we get x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 is another way of writing y minus 1 quantity squared. And now we see through completing the square that we do in fact obtain the rectangular equation for that circle centered at 0, 1 with radius 1. So this, these examples may have felt a little bit strange because the point of this lesson is to convert equations from polar to rectangular or from rectangular to polar. And it's helpful to know that in addition to these four relationships that we have between our rectangular coordinates and our polar coordinates, that geometry is very helpful. And so sometimes we can use geometry to guide us. Sometimes we don't need it, like in an example like this. But sometimes the geometry can guide us. Like in this case, if you wanted to plot a bunch of points on a machine and say, oh, that's a circle. And that can guide you to the types of algebraic manipulations that you would do to make the change. Also, looking at this, you could just look at this and say, well, if we multiply both sides by r, we get something very nice to switch the left to x, x squared plus y squared and the right to 2y. But this segues us nicely into the issue of polar graphs. So we've tinkered with polar graphs a little bit. But to reiterate, what makes things difficult in terms of graphing in polar is the fact that points do not have unique polar representations. Remember when we looked at polar coordinates for the first time, we said that if you had a, a polar representation, r theta, for a point in the xy plane, you can add multiples of 2 pi to it, to its angle, and have a representation of the same point. And then because you can, ref you can take into account negative values for r, which result in reflections through the origin, that further complicates things and gives you an even more diverse set of polar representations for points. And so when you graph polar equations, the way we do it is you, we say that as long as a point has some polar coordinate representation satisfying the polar equation, we include the point in the graph. And what we saw here is kind of the naive way to graph in polar, just graph a bunch of points. Polar equations, the graphs of polar equations tend to be 
quite a bit different than what you see in rectangular equations and just plotting points especially by hand is usually not going to be enough to see what's happening and we will look at different techniques that we will use in our coming lecture on polar graphing